favorite of the McCollins creatures. This is my Western Black Widow, N Natalie Rushman. Now you may be thinking, why the name Natalie Rushman? Well, Natalie Rushman is the alias for Black Widow in Iron Man 2. So I thought it would be more creative than just calling her Natasha Romanoff or simply Black Widow. The Western Black Widow is one of many, many species of widow spiders. The scientific name of the Western Black Widow is Latrodectus hesperus. The Western Black Widow is from Western North America, from Texas to Canada. They live in grasslands, forests, and man-made structures with dark crevices to hide in. Black Widows, in general, range from the east to west coast, going south into Mexico and north into Canada. However, they are absent in the Midwest and South Central Canada. Black Widows have a short lifespan, with, like many true spiders, with females only living to about two to three years old. While females are definitely small, only about an inch in leg length, Males are much, much smaller and way more slender than the larger females. Female black widows are black in color with their famous red hourglass. Males are much smaller and brown in coloration with cream colored patterns and very bulbous uh, pedipalps compared to that of the females. Black widows are known for their mating behaviors, as when the males try to mate with the females, the females will often try to eat the males, hence the name widow. However, males do escape this fate. After mating, females will make egg sacs with between 100 and 900 eggs in each egg sac and females can hold onto sperm from a single mate for their entire lifetime. So if you get a wild caught black widow like I have, you may end up with, fertile, with a fertile egg sac that has hundreds of little baby widow spiders. Despite the fear people have for the black widow, Black widows are very shy and try to stay away, hiding in crevices or in a corner. Black widows get a bad rep for their bites and highly toxic venom. However, the truth, the truth is, if they sense a threat, they will often try to run away and only bite if need be. If you are bitten, you will experience a syndrome referred to as latrodectism which manifests as severe pain, cramping, and sweating, and more severe symptoms like muscle paralysis, respiratory failure, and seizures. So while most victims do not get severely ill after getting bit, you should seek medical attention if you are bitten, especially if more severe symptoms begin. Luckily, out of all the people who get bit a year, no one in the United States has died from a black widow bite in, for several decades. The reason why is despite having potent venom, their fangs are so small and so little venom is injected or the spider dry bites that most people only get the baseline effects or none at all. But as I said earlier, the spiders are not out to bite you and would much rather run away. So if you see a black widow, you should be careful and not find a reason for the black widow to bite you. So now we're going to go on to their captive care. Their captive care is very simple and I am going to talk about it while I put her in so I no longer have to worry about holding her. And I was gonna use a different stick, but since she's already webbed up this one so much, I don't feel like putting her on a different one because it's very hard to get her off of something once she has started. Now the question is getting this one in because it is we did not anticipate putting this one in as it is oversized. So we're going to have to clip this before we continue with their captive care. So I clipped a couple of the branches and now I'm going to get her down in there after she's off the butt of the stick.
any day now. So now she's in here, let's seal this up so she doesn't escape. So the enclosures do not have to be very big as they don't like having a lot of space. This is what I keep my black hole spider in, ton 618. You should check out that video after you're done watching this. Um, and there is, it's very simple, there's not a lot in here, there is a cork backing. There is some soily substrate. I use cocoa fiber with some sphagnum moss on it. And then of course there's her stick which she will build her web on. They don't require much moisture as they get almost all of their water from their food, but a light misting every once in a while is beneficial. And finally for feeding, they don't eat a lot as they are very small, small spiders. So small feeders like tiny crickets is perfect for them and they don't have to be fed very often like most spiders. And finally, while the spiders are not aggressive and aren't, in and aren't and not inclined to bite, you still should not free handle your spider unless you're doing something like rehoming her them like I was, like this is what she was living in. While she could probably live in this for her whole life, I'd rather give her something a bit bigger. And also, if you're going to do that, using something like a stick or a paintbrush is definitely recommended so you don't have to put her on your hand. So that is Natalie Rushman, my Western Black Widow. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about Black Widows. I learned a lot while I was researching for this video. So thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I will see some on Colin's Creatures.